Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we will share a direct comparison between the Ampero Stomp 2 versus the Boss GT1000 Core versus the Line 6HX Stomp. And this is gonna be the most extensive comparison video I have ever done, by far. First of all we will share a demo song here in the three units in action then we will compare the features and technical characteristics of the units with a very detailed comparison chart then we will hear more sounds in a dedicated section of this video where we will compare the units against a plexi for overdriven tones and a fender deluxe for clean tones checking out the frequency response, the dynamic range management, the note envelope, etc. Then we will also compare the effects of these three units. And finally, I will give you my two cents. So I hope you enjoy and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell as it's gonna really help me to make more videos like this. Let's start! We will now check the differences between the three units among the following parameters number of amps, caps and microphones built in, third party IRs availability, number of effects and effect chain management in general, MIDI possibilities, audio inputs and outputs, foot switches and expression pedal, screen size and type, looper capabilities, ADA conversion and USB channels available, special features available with the three units, current power dimensions, weight and price. First of all we have 87 amps, 68 caps and 10 mics with four of them that are combinations of mics like uh, an SM57 and uh, a Royer 1 to 1. You can change uh, five different positions of the mics and we have a power amp simulation only that as far as I know is missing in the HX Stomp and the GT1000 core that allows us for instance to pair the Ampero with our favorite valve preamp like a Victory V4. Then we have 87 amps, 37 caps and 16 mics built in in the HX Stomp while the GT1000 core offers 23 amps and caps 
plus 12 standalone cups. With the HX you can set the mic distance but not the mic position, while the GT1000 core offers the possibility to set both the positions and the distances. So here I would give the thumbs up to the Ampero, both for its large choice of amp, preamp and power amps, and for the mic section, with that double mic option which is pretty handy. It is worth noticing that the so-called AIRD amplifier design philosophy of the boss put an emphasis on accurately recreating the interaction between a total amplifier setup, I mean amp plus speaker section. As such, each amp model is recreated with its ideal speaker combination. That's why here I'm writing 23 amps and caps plus 12 more caps, because the 23 amps and caps have been captured together with the AIRD BOSS technology. They all offer the possibility to load third-party IRs and we have 50 user slots in the Ampero, 128 user slots in the HX and 16 user slots in the BOSS GT1000 core. With both the Ampero Stomp 2 and the HX Stomp you can load IRs up to 2048 sample points and unfortunately BOSS offers scarce details about the quality of the IRs you can load. So thumbs up to the HX Stomp. The Ampero offers more than 180 effects arranged in up to 12 effects blocks, with the possibility to have two parallel paths of effects. The BOSS has 116 effects distributed in 24 blocks and you can have three parallel sets of effects while the HX has more effects, 200, but you can run up to 8 FX blocks. So I think that the boss here is the winner, as it offers the more flexible signal chain with a lot of blocks and with 3 rows of parallel effects, so you can really create pretty complex signal chains. All the units have MIDI ports, but the GT1000 core has MIDI over TRS, while the Ampero and the HX Stomp have both regular MIDI ports. As regards I.O., the Ampero has two in a stereo effect loop, unbalanced and balanced outputs via TRS cables, a dedicated headphone out and an aux in an aux in that is missing in the HX and the core. The HX has two inputs, two FX loops with the send that requires a stereo cable, a TRS cable, an unbalanced stereo output and a dedicated headphone out. The GT1000 core on the other hand has two inputs and two FX loops but only stereo unbalanced outputs where the HX Stomp and the Ampero have balanced outputs. Furthermore, the core has an headphone out that function also as left out, where the Ampero and the HX Stomp have a dedicated headphone out. And finally, the Ampero is the only one with an aux in. Here I think that the Ampero and the HX are better than the GT1000 core, as for instance they have balanced outputs that are surprisingly missing in the GT1000 core and that could be important if you have to run long cables in live situation. Here I don't understand the boss choice. What's the point in having high quality converters at 32 bits if you're gonna lose sound quality with unbalanced outputs? I don't know. All in all, I would give the thumbs up to the Ampero and the HX Stomp. The Boss GT1000 core has three foot switches, like the other units and two inputs for external controllers or expression pedals and one can also be used in order to control an amp, I mean for amp switching. Here I will give the thumbs up to the GT1000 core as the output for controlling the amp could be very useful. The screen of the Ampero is the best as it is the biggest one and touch sensitive, no doubts here. The Ampero manages longer looper than the AHX and the core. As regards ADA conversion and USB ports, the Ampero has only 44.1 kHz converters, which is a kind of a bummer. 
On the other hand, it offers eight USB channels that are pretty useful and the USB Type-C connectivity, which you know I really love as it is reversible. The HX offers eight USB channels too and it can also reach 96 kHz. The Core offers better converters at 32 bits against 24. It can reach 96 kHz, but it has a micro USB connection, which I really hate. So here I would give the thumbs up to the HX Stomp. As regards special features, I would mention the Celestion's IRs available in the Ampero, the scenes or snapshots available in the HX Stomp. So here I would give thumbs up to both the Ampero and the HX Stomp. As regards the power needs, the core needs less power at 670 mA. As regards the dimensions and weight, they are similar with the Ampero that is the bigger and weighter, even because it has a bigger screen. As regards the price, the Ampero is 455 euro and 499 dollars and is the cheaper one in comparison with the other unit. The Ampero has also been just launched, so the price can decrease in the next month. So let's summarize the red and green thumbs. Suspense, we have 8 greens and 5 reds for the Ampero, 6 greens and 7 reds for the HX Stomp, and 3 greens and 10 reds for the GT1000 core. So according to this comparison chart, the Ampero Stomp 2 is a little bit better, without considering that each feature could have a different importance for you. So you may consider the HX better just because it has the scene or snapshot management, or the GT1000 core better as it has the most flexible effects chain management. But if we just algebraically sum the red and green, the Ampero Stomp 2 is a little bit better. Please let me know if there is something wrong or if there are other info or differences that I didn't mention and that are important for you, so that we can enrich this comparison and help other guitarists who are unsure which unit to buy. Let's now hear some more sounds. Welcome in the more sound section of this video that is gonna be the most extensive one I have ever made. We will now compare the modelers versus two real valve amps, a jumper red plexi that is connected to a greenback speaker and with everything to noon but the volume that is at 8 for both the channels and a Fender Deluxe Reverb connected to a Jensen speaker with everything to noon. In the modeler I have loaded their simulations of the real amps with the IR I have made of the speakers I'm using in both the real amps. We will be testing the frequency response, the dynamic range management and the note envelope of the real deal versus the modelers playing few leaks with the guitar. I have already recorded the DI tracks of the leaks in my digital audio workstation so we are sure that we are gonna send the same exact leak to the modelers and the real amp without introducing little human errors derived from the fact that it is impossible to play the same leak many times without little variations. These are the five leaks I will be using. I will use the first to match the frequency response I mean we will hear the amps and the modelers with the same settings and then I will tweak the modelers to sound as close as possible to the real deal. Then with the second leak we will hear the bass frequency, then with the third leak we will test the dynamic response of the modelers, I mean the way the modelers cleans up and breaks up according to the volume of your guitar or how soft or hard you push the strings. And with the fourth and fifth leak, we will check out the knot envelope management. Then we will test also three effects for each modeler. A chorus, actually a CE1 chorus, a ping pong delay, that in the GT1000 core is not really a ping pong delay, but is called pan delay, and finally a plate reverb. I've tried to match the types of effects and settings for each modeler, even if it is almost impossible, as each modeler has its own parameters even for the same effect. Therefore, 
it is, as I was saying, impossible to make a scientific comparison. But at least I hope you will be able to hear how to say the character of each modeler, so that you can decide yourself which one you prefer. I will let you now hear the test and I will not say anything, so that you can make up your own idea without being influenced by mine. And we will discuss the results later on in my two cents section of this video. Let's start.
Now, final considerations here, and please notice that these are gonna be my personal opinions and you may not agree with me, and this is totally fine. Let's start from the tone. As regards overdriven tones, all the plexi simulations were pretty good. I would say that the Ampero was the one that needed less tweaking, just having to increase a tiny bit the treble. And I had the same experience comparing the Ampero to the JCM 800, where the Ampero simulation was almost spot on. Also, the HX Stomp and the GT1000 Core were pretty good, even if they required more tweaking and the GT1000 Core was a little bit more noisy to my ears. As regards the clean Fender Deluxe Reverb, the situation is different. The Ampero and the HX required just to decrease the high frequency, where the Boss GT1000 Core was really a nightmare to tweak. And finally, I was even not happy with the results. I would say that the core has a nice clean sound, but it does not seem a deluxe reverb. Please let me know your opinions and findings in the comments section below. I'm really curious to know what you think about the tone differences of these units. As regards effects, well, as you know, I've always been skeptical in comparing the effects sound, as we don't have a clear reference uh, as we have with amps, where, uh, for instance, we have the real tube amp to which we can compare the modelers. Furthermore, the parameters of each effect were pretty different each unit from the other, even when comparing the same effect. So all in all, I think it's just a matter of taste. One thing is sure, that if you want the unit that offers the most complex signal chain, you should go with the Boss GT1000 core, that has more or less 24 effects blocks and 3 parallel effect chains versus the 8 blocks of the HX and the 12 of the Ampero, with a 2 parallel effect chain for both the units. On the other hand, if you want the unit that offers the most complete array of tools to shape your amp and cab tone, I think that the Ampero Stomp could be the unit for you, with a pretty high number of amps and cabs, the possibility to have only power amps, the possibility to use cabs with double mics, the possibility to load Celestion's IRs, etc. For playing live, I would go either with the Ampero or the HX Stomp, as they both offer balanced outputs that are missing in the GT1000 core, and with balanced outputs you can run long cables without noise. Furthermore, for playing live, the HX Stomp has also the scene management that allows you to switch on and off seamlessly a set of effects that can be pretty handy while playing live. In terms of easiness of use, the Ampero and the HX are better than the core, in my opinion. The core is pretty complex, for instance, the process of loading IRs is more difficult than uh, with the Ampero or the HX. As with the GT1000 core, you have to use a specific cap that is different from the one you use to build the effect chain, and it is pretty strange. All in all, if you want the unit that offers the best value for money, I mean the most complete array of features at the lowest price, I think the Tempero is the unit to go. Of course, it does not have the flexibility of the GT1000 core in terms of effect chain management, but you can build articulated signal chain, you have a lot of tools for shaping your amp and cab tone, and well, it is cheaper than both the HX and the core. What I really miss in the Ampero is the 48 kHz conversion rate that I typically use for recording and that is available in both the HX and the core. But now it's your turn. What are your opinions? Which unit better suit your needs? Which unit would you buy? Please let me know your precious and valuable opinions in the comment section below. We have now reached the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell and leave a thumbs up, it would be of a great help. 
If you're interested in my IRs or in my camper profiles, you can check out the link in the card above or description below, where there is also a link to a playlist of songs of mine. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video. Bye bye.